Hi, my name is Carolyn. I'm here on behalf of 91.7 FM WICB. And I am gladly accompanied here by Billy Dean Thomas with the crazy flow. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be here because I, I have to honestly just start us off by complimenting your cleverness and talent because seriously, your your uh, rap style is is wicked. So I want to I want to hear a little bit more about your lyrics before we before we get started into some more of the questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm super happy to be here today as well. Um, and just a little bit about myself. Um, I obviously am a lover of words. Um, a lot of my background sort of stemmed from spoken word performance. Um, I took a lot of like advanced poetry and performance classes as a high school student. Um, and so I pretty much, yeah, I started my performance, I guess, sort of career with um, spoken word and doing that. But I've always been a musician as well. So I kind of later on in my um, college years merged both the words with musicianship um, and was able to form a band. And I'm just super excited about actually being on this journey and like merging both parts of myself um, to, you know, stand into the truth of who I am today. Yeah, that, that's something that I really appreciate about you as an artist, you, uh, like a multi-instrumentalist. You know, you're a, a wicked quick MC and a, a producer. And, you know, I don't want to leave anything out because you've made some really cool videos too. So there's a lot to you. You know, you're more than just a rapper, a hip hop artist. You know, you're very, very multi-dimensional. So sorry if I left anything out of, of no. what, you, uh, what you are, because you, you are a lot. All in all, you're just really talented and very accomplished artist with many awards and recognized by a lot of people. So all I'm getting at is that you really embody your music and it's starting to pay off for you too. Like from head to toe, you're all in it. So I wanted to know a little bit more about your passion and how that's taken you on your current trajectory. Hmm. That's a great question. And thank you so much um, for all of your kind words about my work. Um, I think, you know, what keeps me passionate is really just trying to be, you know, as true to myself when it comes to experimentation. Like even before this call, I was just like practicing piano and I, you know, I'm not taught any of these instruments really, but it's important for me to just, um, you know, if I want to try something to really just dive in it head first. Um, and I think that's something that I bring to any art form that I'm engaged with at the time is like, I really try to commit 100% um, and give it my best, even if I know I'm not the most skilled at something at first. Um, but yeah, so that really keeps me motivated. Um, I think also, you know, what goes on in the world really sparks a lot of what I do. Um, and when I do it, um, I think, you know, current events, as well as just like the history of my family is really big in my writing and in my practice. And so I really just try to pay homage as well as like learn from, um, you know, the people from my past and, and just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm not leaving anybody out when I'm telling stories and, and when I'm, you know, recreating my own ideas of how stories have taken shape, that I also include people that are erased, like folks from my gender identity, whether it's my race, et cetera. Um, I feel like I'm more of a, a historian and like a documentarian, but hip hop is just my, my vehicle. You know what I mean? Well, hip hop's a great vehicle for uh, documenting history. Thank you. So you're definitely in the right spot, I feel. And it sounds like you feel that way as well. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think about it a lot and I feel like a lot of what I have been saying and what I've been doing with my music has been extremely political, not intentionally, but I think just by, you know, the nature of like my identities, it just happens to put me in, um, you know, a lot of spaces with a lot of different ideas and people with different perspectives and, you know, whether I should be invited to spaces or not. And so by virtue of just existing, I feel like there is a lot of, you know, commentary and things surrounding the politics of like whether I'm allowed to be um, as a whole. And so it's been interesting. And I feel like if I wasn't a rapper um, or a musician, I would probably be one of two things. And this will probably happen in my future, but like I would either be a politician um, or a chef or both. Um, and so I feel like I kind of teeter that line with the music of like, political sort of politician, public policy, and even my day jobs were all surrounding like 
state agency work. I work for the, for state agencies um, and you know cultural arts programs. And so, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like policy and hip hop is very linked. I I agree with you there. And that kind of brings up another question that I wanted to talk to you about because you actively use social commentary in your quips. And uh, it's great that you're a guest here for speaking up because that's really uh, what this all is about. It's to kind of talk a little bit more about activism through music. And it sounds like you've really pinned the, the tail on the donkey there with the hip hop and, and social commentary are really well aligned with one another. So I, I wanted to talk to you about two things because you had an album from 2020 for better or worse and an EP from 2018, Rocky Barboa. Mm. Clever name, by the way. <laughs> so in Be Well, which is the second song off of the 2020 album, you say you're about to break the door down. Music is your peace treaty. Mm. And we'll get to that in a second. But in Free Man from the 2018 EP, you talk a lot about protecting, like not letting your future son live a life like yours or doing this for young queer boys you know, I, I want you to tell me a little bit about your music has become a bridge toward the connection to yourself and the world and the fight toward growth and protection for the next generation. Ooh, you're dropping the bars this afternoon. Um, yeah, I mean, I think about the next generation all the time. And sometimes it's not even the next generation. Sometimes it's just the next person who's going to be faced with a similar challenge and how I can make it easier for them, um, you know, by standing in my truth at that moment, whether it's like performing at a venue who said I wasn't allowed or, you know, um, participating in something where generally you wouldn't see somebody who looks like me, like even if I know that they're going to be challenges and really uncomfortable moments, sometimes I still do that because I know that every inch is important, you know, every part of the process is important. And I feel like I'm definitely like the middle child. Like I'm sure you've heard like J. Cole's middle child song where he's like the barrier between both worlds. And like, I have a lot of issues with him right now. So I'm not, this is not a shout out to him more than it's just like a comparison of like, I feel like I am in that middle space where I do re recognize that there's a power in the past and there's a power in the future and like wanting to, recognize both of those pieces and honor both of those pieces. Um, and, you know, so that we can like have a better space for the people that wanna do this and come next. I have a lot of nieces and nephews. I have a lot of responsibilities to a lot of young people. And so it's really important to me to give back to young people and also to like, you know, recognize that even if I don't wanna be, I am in a mentorship position. Like as, especially as a hip hop artist, I mean, young people look to hip hop artists more than president sometimes, you know what I mean? Like that level of engagement and um, what is it, you know, their power of influence is like sometimes a lot stronger than a mom and a dad, you know what I mean? So it's really important to me um, to make sure that I recognize that and I'm doing the right things with that influence if I have it, you know? And I'm curious because you've talked a little bit about not being able to enter spaces. And from what I hear, it sounds like you've had some trouble in the past trying to get into places and being, you know, one with the synergy and being one with your profession. I, I'm, I'm a little bit curious about those experiences. You know, especially in my time as like an emerging hip hop artist or what have you, um, I've been told several times in different places that like hip hop isn't allowed at this venue or, you know, um, I haven't been selected because I'm not a cis male artist or, you know, just, you know, I'm sure there are tons of people that have been denied access to certain things, but I feel like it is a lot more prevalent um, when you're a hip hop artist and when you're making any kind of black music, those are some of the sort of, um, I guess the, the barriers that people try to put in front of you um, to deter you from doing what you're doing. Like even the other day I had, someone came to me with this really cool opportunity to be on an incredible bill um, for this like, it was like a very political showcase they were putting on. And I was like, this is awesome. Like I'm super pumped to be a part of it. And they were like, we want you to do Freeman but we want you to change all the lyrics. And I was like, that doesn't really sound like you want me to do Freeman. <laughs> That sounds like you want me to do what you want me to do and like 
take bits and pieces of what I said and like craft it for what your audience is trying to have. You know what I mean? And it was a really big, um, it was a big moment for me just because, you know, there were a lot of other things that came along with it too. But I think just having someone who isn't a hip hop artist, who doesn't know my life experiences as well, editing my writing, like the violence that I felt with this person doing that in that moment and almost just like kind of whitewashing my lyrics but also telling me that 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 part of you isn't important but this part is really important felt really uncomfortable and like so just the lack of like access and being accepted into spaces is also a thing too it's not just about the physical being in the space but also just like not wanting you to bring your whole self to a space is also an issue yeah that's that's uh I, wow, I'm speechless. Like, I, I don't know if uh, my face is going to show up on this, but I really, I can't believe that that was something that was said to you. I mean, I found Freeman um, so quick witted. Like, I would love to hear you perform that live. And it is on YouTube. You have a live performance on YouTube, which I, I really enjoyed seeing. So uh, that's a, a wild experience that I think, um, I'm hoping doesn't happen to you again and hoping that when this interview comes out that they hear how it affected you, but not to a point that is going to bring you to stop making that music. If anything, that's fuel for the fire. So oh, talk about it. Now it's like, oh, that you really try to hurt my feelings. Okay, great hey, everybody, look at this wild thing that happened and how people, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's it's therapeutic too. Like, I'm really grateful for you and this conversation because, you know, without these sort of combos, I wouldn't be able to like talk about that experience. I'd be harboring that and feeling really bad about it. Um, but this allows me to like share with people who support my work, like look at the stuff that happens, but still that's why we got to keep doing what we're doing and we got to keep showing up. And the next time they're not going to go to another artist and ask them to do that because the response from me was so bad that hopefully they'll change it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. I totally see what you're saying. And I appreciate that you appreciate this because I do as well. I think it's an important work that everybody needs to be doing. And I kind of want to, um, divulge into to, uh, a topic about your identity. And if at any time you want to answer this question a different way than I'm warning, or if you're un uncomfortable answering it, just let me know. Um, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you. So as a, a person of color in the LGBTQ plus community, uh, you identify within a marginalized group with in a group of individuals who are by nature marginalized mm -hmm. in our present operations. So as a person of color, the injustices and inequalities that follow living as such are based upon your appearance because of how that appearance has resonated within the society over the years. And the same goes for queerness and gender identity, the discomfort people seem to have for individuals who aren't within the norm. So I'm interested to hear about how those experiences have overlapped. Yeah, I mean, um, kind of similarly to what I was talking about before, I think I luckily haven't been in a situation where I've been forced to choose which part of my identity I want to show today or not because of two, well, one specific thing is that like, I cannot hide these parts of my identity. You see them and as opposed to other people, you know, who may be more passing, you know, maybe they pass as straight or maybe they pass as, you know, white or something else. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, so I have to 100%, um, or at least what I tell myself is like, be 100% confident in the body that I'm in and bring all parts of myself to a space, no matter who's uncomfortable or not. One, because I don't have a choice. And two, because if I am going to do that, why not represent that with, um, you know, power and uh, confidence and it even stems into or veers into the way that I present myself and the way that I dress in certain spaces. Um, I really try to reclaim 
sort of the gazes that I know I'm going to get. I know everyone's going to be looking at me. So if that's the case, give them something to look at. You know they're staring at you. Reverse the narrative. Subvert the narrative. Like, um, you know, let's let's control it. And so, you know, the way that that kind of shows up, it, I'll give you some examples. Um, what's the situation? So like, particularly within hip hop context, right? We're used to hearing primarily about, you know, hip hop artists that are cis male. Um, we're used to seeing ciphers with mostly cis male dudes. We're used to seeing top five hip hop artists of mostly cis male dudes. Like, this is a space that I'm in where, you know, folks that look like me aren't really represented even within hip hop. And I am a hip hop artist. And so in those spaces, it's like, okay, are you trying to tell me that because I am non-binary and I don't identify as a cis male that I don't get to be a hip hop artist? Like, what is the messaging um, that you're sending? And sometimes it's even down to like, okay, well, now we have a group of all women, particularly black women hip hop artists. Are you trying to tell me because I'm not a black woman that I can't be a part of hip hop even? So like, there's always these like, um, almost like affinity groups within hip hop that keep telling me that I don't belong there. Um, and so what I have done is try to recreate my own space. Okay, you don't, you don't think that I'm a part of that group and you're excluding me from that group. So I'm gonna, maybe I'm not even gonna create a group. Maybe I'm just gonna partner with everybody. And now how are you going to tell me that I'm not involved when I'm literally orchestrating an entire album with both groups of people? <laughs> you know what I mean? So just like change the positioning. And, and it's not always about groups. I know my first instinct is to say, I make my own group, but I don't even, I don't even think that's the point. I don't think the group uh, mentality is, is the point of this. I think what it's about is like, how do we shut those groups down? How do we break them? How do we get people to stop saying best female hip hop artists? Because why does that matter? How do we make people say, who's the best period? You know what I mean? Who's the dopest MC, period? Doesn't matter what they look like, what sex they're assigned with, because that's just bizarre. But like, let's just focus on the talent, you know? So I'm just trying to break, I'm trying to break all of that down just by virtue of like existing. I don't even have to do anything. I think it's just happening. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, I really like that. By just existing, you are becoming this entity that perpetuates openness and just the best period doesn't matter no label no group exactly i speaking of manifesting I, i'm curious about uh your your title as uh, the queer big <laughs> and calling yourself rocky barboa like wh where does that come from <laughs> that's so funny yeah so the queer big thing when i first sort of like I don't know, started to use that. Um, it was really just about feeling like as somebody who is like, you know, I guess like I'm a dark skinned person. I'm not within Western beauty standards of what is like thin and light skin and, you know, and I feel like that was something that really resonated or I resonated with with Biggie because when Biggie first came out, people booed him. You know, like he was seen as like, like, who is this guy? He's not even attractive. Like, how is he getting all this publicity? But at the end of the day, it was about his skill. It was about his talent. It was about his swag, you know? And so at first I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm from New York. Like, I feel like I also have all of these similarities with him. Like, I, I'm like the queer biggie. Like, I'm trying to do the same thing <laughs> that he's doing. And what's so funny is that now, as I'm unlearning sort of like, you know, why am I even idolizing these people that are super problematic? Like, I think I'm retraining myself to think about like, is he actually somebody that inspired me? Maybe it wasn't him, maybe it's somebody else. Maybe, you know, but the issue is that I didn't have any examples. I didn't have any models that I could look at and be like that non-binary person in 1999 is so dope. You know what I mean? Like, we just don't it's not there and I, it's not readily available. So I am, I am unlearning a little bit of that and, um, you know, shout out to Biggie still, but also recognizing that like, he's not the main source of inspiration really. I think it's just about a feeling that I was trying to 
um, capture. And as far as the Rocky Barboa, I just thought that was hilarious. So it it came to me because what, what was I doing? At that time, I was working with a producer and his name is Snakefoot. And um, I was like, I want to make a title that like includes both of our names because he produced some of the stuff. And I was like, I don't know, like I'm spinning bars, you're Snakefoot. I'm like, what's a snake, a boa constrict? Like I was just like trying to be like a marketing brainiac that day and failing miserably. But at the end of it, I was like, boa constrictors, Rocky bars. And then I was like, holy shit, Rocky bars. <laughs> um, but also because a lot of the lyrics are about like fighting and struggles. And um, I love Creed. And so that was also at that time that movie had probably just dropped. And so I was really inspired by boxing my dad loves boxing it just all kind of felt really um appropriate for that title and then the person I was working with I don't know some of these things just happen it's weird but it just kind of comes yeah I like I like letting things as they come that's something beautiful that art does for people is yeah. just let it flow off the tongue <laughs> um I guess my my last question here uh unless you have anything else to add after it. But my last question is, uh, you said that you had been unlearning some of the inspirations that you might have uh, looked toward in hip hop or in life. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you're starting to relearn if you have any current inspirations in hip hop or in life. That's a great question. Um, there are so many people that I love that I just don't see getting as much praise as they should. Like right now, one of my biggest inspirations, just as far as their like advocacy, as well as their swagger is Pauli Murray. So Pauli Murray, I don't know if you know about Pauli Murray, but um, they're incredible non-binary slash trans, um, just like black activists, public policy advocate, um, specifically with like, queer rights, women's rights. They even were the person who created the theory that won the Brown versus Board of Education case, but nobody talks about it. Um, you know, that link between their work. And I just, Polly is just like, it's one of the first times that I've seen footage of and, and sort of learned about a person that was like very similar in thought as myself and also like, um, with their gender expression similar to what I look like, but in like the 1930s. So like when I'm looking at pictures of them, I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. It feels like a like old grandparent or something, you know what I mean? And so it just feels like history and genealogy of like, I don't know, people that look like me. And so that feels really cool to connect with, um, you know, their history and just their identity. Um, also, as far as music, though, in music, I just love, um, I love Little Sims. I've been thinking a lot about, like, my, like, the queer folks. Like, I love Mickey Blanco. I really like Cakes Tequila. I don't know if you've heard of Cakes Tequila. It's really dope. Another queer QTPOC MC. Um, who else do I really love? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm also random. Like, I don't really... I don't spend as much time listening to hip hop. I probably listen to hip hop the least. I am a very big uh, R&B head and like vocals. Like I love singers. Singers are like, I spend a lot of time watching Leanne La Havas videos. That is like my- I love Leanne La Havas. <laughs> Like I'm just all over her. Like she's my favorite. She's really inspiring. And I'm also, I just started taking guitar lessons. So now I'm like listening to her songs and watching her videos um, for guitar inspiration. And she's an incredible guitarist. And I'm like, why does nobody talk about this? Like, so I don't know, just really finding these other um, inspirations, you know, of people that have always been in my mind, but I've never like really really focused on how much they inspire me because I'm just like yeah you know like top five biggie small two no like I'm done with that like <laughs> I like Leah Le Havis. I don't care if she's a hip-hop artist or not look at her talent and you tell me something different and yeah I don't know I just draw inspiration from 
multiple genres, art forms, people. I just found this really dope visual artist this morning from South Africa who's like creating, it's like Afro-futurist paintings of Black folks and that looks really wonderful and just like showing what Black children look like in the future. That like threw me for a loop. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. So yeah, I don't know. I, I like a lot of different things. I'm weird. Nah, it's cool. I like that you embrace it because that's important. I'm weird too. <laughs> uh, so if there's anything else you, you want to add about any experiences or anything that you want to plug, any future music or anything about you, uh, now's the time. Future music. Um, you know, I am hoping to work on some music videos this year. I think that's going to definitely be one of my main focuses. I am also like back in writing mode. So who knows? I'm, I'm excited to start really cranking out some new songs. I don't know if they'll be out right away, but I am working on new music. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm about to come back out with my um, my sneakers. I did a collab with Converse last in 2019. And um, it was really sick. They like put little heads, little BDT heads all over my, my shoes. And so I'm doing another shipment of those. So I don't know, people like my music and want to cop some merch. Um, I'll be coming out with my shoe collection again. So that'll be fun. Yeah, I don't know. Just come hang out with me. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Well, beautiful. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. It's It's been real nice to uh, get to know you a little bit more off the book. And I appreciate you as an artist and I appreciate you as an activist. So thank you for your hard work. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Keep in touch. Yeah. <laughs>